Washington. Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and over there is John Lewandowski. We are very tired individuals at the time of this recording. It is Wednesday, 12.10 in the morning. Thank you to all of our families for putting up with our crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, understand, we are very tired and slightly cranky. Well, I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Today, the National Predators took on the Vancouver Canucks. All right. Uh, shots on goal in the first period. Vancouver outshot Nashville seven to four. In the second period, Vancouver uh, or Nashville outshot Vancouver eleven to four. In the third period, Vancouver outshot Nashville nine to seven. And in total, Nashville outshoots Vancouver twenty two to twenty. Uh, Nashville was better in the faceoff circle at sixty one point four percent to Vancouver's thirty eight point six percent. Nashville goes one for four on the power play with four penalty minutes, while Vancouver goes 0 for two with eight penalty minutes. Nashville out hit Vancouver 34 to 33. Vancouver out blocked Nashville 19 to 15. Vancouver had five giveaways to Nashville's four, and Vancouver had seven takeaways to Nashville's four. All right. Um. Scoring in the first or in the third, all goals were scored in the third. Yeah. Uh, scoring in the third, my least favorite player on the Canucks is Nikita Zadorov. And for those of you who remember, um, he's the one that put uh, uh, Novak on the shelf earlier in the season when he was with the Flames. So, not a biggest fan of him. Uh, that is his second in the playoffs, also assisted by Quinn Hughes. Um. Uh, then scoring on the power play, which was the Dakota Joshua uh, boarding on Evangelista. Hey, they got it for once. Yeah. Wish they had it for stats, uh, for stats, but, you know, what can you do? We'll take this one. Roman Yossi, the captain, off of the weirdest goal I'd ever seen. Yeah. Holy belly scored it, technically. Mm -hmm. uh, on the power play what I say in the last video they gotta get the power play going or they're done Yeah. thank you for watching and assisted by Forsberg has started to bury his first Tyson Berry played very well Yeah. I would not be surprised to see him back in um, in Nashville um at this point, he's a veteran. He's been in these situations. He's very experienced with the Canucks, being with uh, the Edmonton Oilers for many, 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 many years. And those two teams do not get along. Yeah. So then at the 1246 mark, the guy I have given the most crap to in the entirety of this podcast is the hero? Alexander Carrier scores his first in the playoffs with an assist from Gustav Nyquist and Philip Forsberg. Nyquist third, Forsberg fourth. Friends win 2-1. Now, I will say that McDonough got, had a, a chance and it looked like the stick had no flex in it. It just caught the stick stiff. Now, yeah. take that for whatever your perverted minds will let you, but uh, <laughs> uh -huh. um, that, that's the only way I can explain it. There just was no flex in that hockey stick whatsoever, and when that happens, it you you have a tendency of a chance to shank it. You know, it, it just didn't, it looked like it caught the stick flush, and, 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 and that sucks. Not only as a player, but as a fan, you know, you can't, there's not much you can do about it. It, he tried. Best he yeah. got. Believe it or not, the hockey gods were on our side and we got one. So, it went whoops. <laughs> um, your three stars of the game. Third star of the game was UC Saros with a 50 or 95.0 save percentage. Um, 
Scar uh Nikita Zadorov with a goal and Roman Yossi with a goal. In net for the Vancouver Canucks is their AHL starter. He was a starter with the Abbotsford. Uh, ooh, what is Abbotsford's team name? I haven't seen them. In I the think show. the Canucks now. It is. I think. Let me check this. <laughs> Neither one of us know. In the AHL is our specialty. <laughs> this is how you know it's late. So welcome. Yeah, the Canucks. So <laughs> the Abbotsford Canucks. Okay, which technically, by Canadian terms, Canucks is offensive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like you know the other thing with French Canadians. I'm not gonna say it because it'll get you get me canceled. But you know mm -hmm. what I mean. If you're a French Canadian or have hung around Canadians, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it is Arthur Silvos. He stopped 90.9%. He has done very well. I'm surprised that De Smith was the backup. He like like everybody, you know, I've said it just seems like the uh well, this Vancouver team now. Before we get into any more of this, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Thank you for watching to this point so far. Hockey Locker is Milwaukee's number one outfitter for hockey needs. Right across the street from Wilson Park, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They have a phone number, 414-800-7585. And their website is HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Anywho, back to our scheduled programming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All righty. Um, in, in a sense, let's get serious for a second. All jokes aside, I know we're kind of tired. There's a wave of emotions. Um. Uh, Colorado gets the job done, eliminates uh, Winnipeg. Um, looks like the Islanders are out as well. Yeah. Um, so Florida's out, or Tampa's out. Washington's out. Islanders are out. Jets are out. And it almost seems like the Kings are a formality at this point. Uh, best series right now is looking like it's going to be Vegas-Dallas. Um, I watched some of that game yesterday. Really good hockey game. It was fun to watch. Had no rooting interest. Uh, Boston and Toronto, I think that goes seven. Um, I'm hoping we go seven. I would love to, to get a win at home. Um, I do, I do think that, uh, if, if the Preds can win at home, uh, that really will flip the pressure on, on Vancouver because you lost at home. You've now lost on the road. You can't seem to win either place. It's kind of doing to them what they did to us early on. You know? Yeah. So we, we, we went in there, lost, got one, came home, lost two. Now we're back in it a little bit. Go in. Try and win at home. If you can't, you thank your fans and, you know, hey, we put up a fight. Um... Go to seven, we, hey, we lost, we put up a fight. You know, at this point, we didn't end up like Washington. We didn't end up like, uh, you know, all the other teams that just won one game. We've won two. You know, Tampa didn't win two. Right. Washington didn't even win one. Right. You no, know, Winnipeg won one. We've won two. You know, to this point, L.A. hasn't won two yet. You know, so we've done something. And the Canucks are a very good hockey team. I'm taking nothing away from a very well-coached hockey team. They seem to be like a thorn in our side. But, you know, um, we'll see how things flip back. I would imagine we're playing on Thursday. Friday. Friday. Almost positive. Let's see. May 3rd, Friday. And then the 5th, which is Sunday. I can imagine the game on Friday will be a 6 o'clock drop. 
or seven o'clock drop, most likely six because of TV. The uh, hell was that? Quiet. <laughs> Stop freaking me out. Uh -huh. My cat was behind me meowing. I was like, the hell are you doing? Um, so that's the schedule. Um, as we talk about the schedule, one thing we might want to talk about a little bit before we mosey on. Is the uh, who will start their series technically tomorrow? Um, let's check the game center here. The Admirals in the last five seasons in the postseason are three, one, and one against the, the Stars in the postseason. As it sits for the final moment, it looks like the Admirals will be without Parson in. Um, and the Stars will be without Borg. I don't know how much that hurts them, but losing Stankoven, losing Borg, two of your top scorers going into a series where the Admirals pretty much have all of our scorers, with the exception of <laughs> Yeah. And who's only been here part of the season. So, I mean, next man up mentality. All these guys are very serviceable, very capable. Um, Looking forward to the postseason. Looking forward to getting a playoff game at home. Um, Ready to be amped and, and loud. Um, Tied to Jonesing for a game almost. Think about it. I haven't done nothing since I haven't done or gone anywhere fun other than the Brewer games, which mm -hmm. they're fun and all, but it's regular season. We're talking about postseason hockey. That's a different atmosphere. That is, you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it, it sense it at the Brewer game we were at, that that energy is there from our fan base. But not so much the Brewer fan base. The people bought by us were pretty loud. But you, you don't sense it. And it, it, it is a different monster. Um, also, uh, congratulations to the Bucks on winning. Boy, did they win. <laughs> yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. I believe Giannis is back for them. No, he didn't play tonight. Or Lillard. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Middleton had 29 points. Bobby Portis had 29 points. Lopez, 12. Beasley, 18. Beverly, 13. Pat Coddington had died. Uh, Danilo Gallinari had four. Okay. Uh, Jake Crowder didn't play. Is he hurt? I think he played last game. Oh, God. Uh, but, yeah. 
We are a bit of basketball fans. It's just sometimes we don't like the uh, drama. We were that, but that's already been eliminated by uh, Denver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Uh, and, and all joking aside, um, I congratulate all sports leagues, no matter what they are. Um, every year, me and John go on the show after the day, Toda 500, and congratulate the winner. Yeah. Every World Series, we congratulate the winner. Um, hockey, whether it's us or someone else, we congratulate the winner. It's 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 a long battle, and the sacrifices that are made amongst the players is lost amongst modern day fans. I know what I'm saying isn't exactly fan friendly. I know this is a fan podcast, but sometimes as fans, we have to be able to sit here and go, you know, um, these Preds players. A lot of them are across the country from their family, across the world from their family. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, wives may be pregnant. They may miss that. Miss doctor's appointments. Miss those big family moments. Somebody passes away and they don't get to say goodbye because they're playing a game and they don't know. There's just so much that goes on privately as an athlete and the sacrifices that they make for our enjoyment. No, I get it. They're getting paid a lot of money to do this. But remember, there's more important things in this world than money. And unfortunately, that is also lost in today's society. So yeah. what I'm saying here is if you're going to go on social media and you're going to bash a player, I would love to see you go do it at the level that they're doing it at, make the sacrifices that they made. It's basically me calling out any hater on any hockey player. Now, dirty and cheap shots, I'm fine with. You call those guys out all you want. Guys like Corey Perry and Marchand and, you, you know, Guys call out LaRue against us all the time, but we know he's a pest. That's why we like him. You love him if he's on your team, hate him if he's not. It's that simple. If LaRue didn't play for us, I'd hate him. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it's very true. <coughs> I think John could think of a hundred reasons of why if what he's done this season had it been against us, we'd have been We'd have been losing our shit. <laughs> you get where I'm going, though? Yeah. You know, at, at the end of the day, we have to be grateful for what we do have. And what we do have is AHL in the playoffs, NHL in the playoffs. That's great. That is great system building. It's how we got to the cup in, in, in 17. I think that was. was yeah. That? Yeah, 17. You know, and, and believe it or not, this is the Preds' first elimination win to save off elimination since 2018. Lo and behold, most people didn't know that statistic. Yeah, it's been that long. Oh, yeah. Think of it this way. What are you going to complain about? Right now, they need to figure out how to win at home. They didn't win at home. They they need to do better. At home. They need to get a power play goal. At home. They, they, and I say this as a team. Because, you know, it's this guy, it's that guy, it's this guy, it's that guy. I see it all over social media. Even from the media talking heads. You know? Like, if it's this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, that's half the team. That's a team problem. Why aren't you just calling it as it is? What are you scared of? 
I'm 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 not being an a hole about it for for no particular reason. I'm being an a hole about it is because the softball questions for me would never come. I'll ask the tough questions. Not scared. Go ahead. I don't care. Most people don't like me anyway. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Most people go up to John. They don't come up to me. <laughs> I'm also the guy who's a realist. I'm also the guy who, who sits there and goes, well, this doesn't look good. And then the not good happens. It doesn't look good. So I call it as it doesn't look good. But I'll also give you what you need to work on to make the good happen. What I do last video I said, hey, you need a power play goal. I only needed one. I mean, it would have been nice to get that empty netter from Sissons, but try shooting at the backhand from an angle from 10 feet or, uh, on the far side. Yeah, not your strong side, on the far side. If it was a strong side, that'd be different. I think it would have been a little more accurate. But it's not a strong side, it's on this far side. It happens. It, it, it's not the perfect world anymore. This, you, you can't. It's not like he was Patrick Steffen where the puck just stuck to the ice and he tripped and busted crap and Edmonton went on to win and ended up getting into the playoffs because of that. You know, it's, it, it's just, there's certain things like, yes, I get it. You're a pro, you should bury that, but you're a pro. Shit happens. What what more can you ask of these guys? They went on a hell of a run, not only them, but the Admirals. Yeah, for sure. Both went on a hell of a run. What was it, 19 games both? With a point? Yeah. The Admirals was 19 wins straight, but the Preds was 19 games with a point. But either way, it's still like the hell of a run. No. Axing on the body. No. Like, I, I, I get it. And, and even I told John I was worried about the game when we lost. I was like, we're going to get smacked in the mouth. Like, what what more can you do this season than what these two teams have done? If it ends now, the hell of a run. Right. Bring on the summer. Let's get the summer program going. Let's start talking to guys about contracts. Let's start getting ready for the draft. That's the way my mentality is. That's the way GM's mentalities are going to be. And that's that's just how we will be as a podcast. My mentality is next thing up. It's much like the playoffs. Next person up. Guy gets hurt, next guy up. Too many guys get hurt, you got a guy in the A. <clears throat> that's the good part about us right now is we're playing. All right. So we're game ready where they're, they're, you don't have guys sitting on the bench. You know, we're just sitting in the stands in a suit. And all right. they get the ice is when they practice. You know, they're getting game experience. They're getting that game physicality. I think that's also part of the reason why the Admirals, uh, the Preds went so far in 17 that they did, was because as soon as we got eliminated, all the guys from here went up and they were having injury after injury. And our guys were just step up, step up, step up, step up, step up. Right. Arvidsson, you had Freddie Gaudreau, you had Kevin Fiala, you had, you know, None of them are here anymore. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't think there's anybody on that 17 team other than Saros and Yossi and Forsberg. I don't really, Sissons? Yeah, Sissons. I think Sissons. Maybe Carrier, but I, there's really nobody there. There's nobody in this that's still here. 
it's 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 a new era. It's a new time for the Preds. And a lot of them are very young. So no matter how you splice it, this is good experience for them. You can play in the AHL your whole career and go up and play one NHL game. And that player that comes in at 30, like a Mark Van Gilder, I remember when Mark Van Gilder at 30 years old finally got his call up to the NHL. It is such a different animal in the regular season. Imagine what it is in the postseason. Because now you're talking about crispness. You're everyone's playing the top teams. You know what I mean? Only the best get in. All right. Top three of your division and two wild card teams. Um, beyond that, anything you'd like to add to this about the last few games for the Preds or anything that stuck out to you that was different today from the last couple games? I'm not really. Because in all reality, the Preds have been the la better team the last couple games. Yeah, they have. Um, Vancouver's had puck luck. And sometimes that's all you need. You know, it all, you can't win a game in the first period, but you can sure lose one. Yeah. Now, if I'm the Preds, keep that intensity. Keep that anger. Remember, you ain't done yet. Shout out to Trisha Yearwood. Relentless. Way to go at front. She posted this at midnight. Trisha Yearwood staying up till midnight to watch Preds games. Let's go. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we're 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 on, we're in this as fans too. We're in this. So um thank you all for watching. Uh, we will be back on Thursday with game one of the Admirals and Stars. Also coming this weekend at some point, our breakdown of the Atlanta Gladiators season. I think we have given their tip fan base enough time to grieve. Yeah. So it's time to dig in and I get to be a meanie. Because mm -hmm. they did not have a good year at all. Mm -hmm. So um unfortunately I would if I were them, I'm probably ripping this team apart. So that's what I intend to do. So um Thank you all for watching, and Atlanta fans know it's the team, not you or the organization. The players on the ice created this mess for themselves. So, thank you all for watching.